For today's lesson, I'm going to give you some tips on how to recognize factoring special cases. If you're given polynomials, can you recognize whether it is perfect square trinomial or difference of perfect squares? Always remember that factoring is the inverse of multiplying polynomials. So if you have a plus b to the second power, this means we need to do a plus b multiplied by a plus b. So using distributive property, we will get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And also, if you have a minus b to the second power, you should have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, as we learned in the previous lessons, which is squaring a binomial. So when you square a binomial, like a plus b squared, you will come up with this trinomial product. And this trinomial is called a perfect square trinomial, or a PST. It is the perfect square trinomial because of three things. The first term is a perfect square. Third term is also a perfect square. And the second term is twice the product of A and B. So again, three things. First term should be a perfect square. Third term should be a perfect square also. And the second term is twice the product of the first and second term. So let's take a look at examples 1 and 2 and determine whether they're PSTs or not. So first, is the first term a perfect square? Yes, it is, because x times x is x squared. Is 25 a perfect square? Yes, it is, because that means we can do 5 multiplied by 5. If you multiply 5 by x and double it, are you getting this middle term? 5 times x is 5x. Double it is 10x. Therefore, this x squared plus 10x plus 25 is a trinomial. So if it is a PST, we can simply factor it as x plus 5 to the second power using this format as well. Number two. Is this a PST? Again, three things that you need to check to determine whether it's a PST or not. First, is it a perfect square? Third term, is it a perfect square? Check. And this is 7 squared. So 7 times x is 7x. You double it, is it negative 14? And it is. So therefore, we need to write the answer as x minus 7 squared. It's minus 7 because we need negative 14x as the middle term. Now let's see if the third example is a perfect square trinomial as well, using those three conditions. First condition, is 4x squared a perfect square? Yes, it is, because 4x squared is the same thing as 2x times itself. Third term 81, check, it's also a perfect square because you have 9 to the second power. Is the second term twice the product of a and b? So which means 2x times 9 is 18x. You double it, it's also 36. So therefore, it is a PST, and we can write the answer as 2x plus 9 to the second power. Because this is 2x squared is 4x squared, 9 squared is 81. If you multiply the two terms, that's 18x, double 18x, you get 36x. So this trinomial is the same thing as the square of this binomial. Now let's determine whether example number 4 is a PST or not as well. So first condition, 25x squared is a perfect square because you have 5x to the second power. Same thing with 36y squared because that is 6y times itself. 
Now, we need to check that the middle term is twice the product of 5x and 6y. Is it twice the product of a and b? What is 5x times 6y? Yes, it's 30xy, but we need to double that to get the second term. And it should be 60. So since it's 30xy, not a 60xy, this means that number 4 is not factorable. It is not factorable because that's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as 5x plus 6y to the second power. If we squared 5x plus 6y squared, it should be 25x squared plus 60xy plus 36y squared. So just a tip, it's not enough to just look at the first term and the third term. Yes, first term and third terms are perfect squares, but this will not satisfy the 2AB criteria. So this is not a PST. Now let's see if example number 5 is also a PST. So using those three conditions. x to the 4th minus 8x squared plus 16. So first term is a perfect square because that is x squared times itself. 16 is 4 to the second power. And if you multiply 4 by x squared, that's 4x squared, you double it, you get negative 8x squared. So yes, this is a perfect squared trinomial. So since it is a perfect squared trinomial, then we can factor this as x squared minus 4 to the second power. Now, do you notice something with x squared minus 4? Can we still simplify that? Yes, we can still simplify that because this binomial is a difference of perfect squares. It's a perfect square minus a perfect square. So x squared minus 4 can be factored out as x plus 2, x minus 2. And since there's square, that means we will have two sets of x plus 2 and two sets of x minus 2. So the final answer can be written as x plus 2 squared and then x minus 2 squared. Or you can write four parentheses, x plus 2, x plus 2, x minus 2, and then x minus 2. The next type of factoring special case is called the difference of perfect squares. And from the name itself, difference of squares, you need to have two terms. Perfect square minus perfect square. And if it is difference of perfect squares, you can factor it as a plus b and a minus b. For example, if you have x squared minus 100, so x squared minus 100 is a difference of perfect squares. It's a difference that's a minus, and these are both perfect squares. So when you factor this, you will write x and x. When you multiply x and x, that is x squared. And 100 is a perfect square, which is 10 times 10. So we need to write 10. We need to write 10. One of them is plus, and the other one is minus. And if you will do distributive property, you will have x squared, negative 10x, positive 10x, minus 100. You will notice that 10x and negative 10x will cancel out, so you will have x squared minus 100 as the final answer. Question 2. 4m squared minus 100. So in this problem, there is a GCF. And the GCF is 4. So we need to factor out first 4. And inside the parentheses, we need to multiply 4 with m squared to get 4m squared. We need to multiply 4 with negative 25 to get a negative 100. 
And again, m squared minus 25 is a difference of perfect squares. Perfect square minus perfect square. So the final answer will be... What do you think is the answer? Yes, it's going to be m plus 5 and then m minus 5. Now let's take a look at examples 3 and 4. So number 3, 9x squared is also a perfect square, which is 3x. 49y squared is also a perfect square, which is 7y times 7y. So we can write the final answer as 3x plus 7y and the other 3x minus 7y. Again, 3x times 3x, that's 9x squared. 7y times negative 7y, that's negative 49y squared. Number four, we need to get first the GCF. What's the GCF of 3x cubed minus 48xy squared? So in this binomial, the GCF is 3x, so take out the GCF 3x. We need to multiply 3x with x squared to get 3x cubed. Now, what do you need to multiply with 3x to get negative 48xy squared? And that should be negative 16y to the second power. Is that our final answer? Can we simplify this further? If you notice, the parentheses is also a perfect square minus a perfect square, which means we can factor it again after the GCF, which is the difference of perfect squares. So the final answer is x plus 4y, and the other is x minus 4y. So now let's try a more challenging problem. 5x to the 4th minus 405. So if you notice, there is a GCF. And the GCF for this problem is 5. So take out the factor, or the greatest common factor, 5. And then we have x to the 4th minus 81. Because 5 times x to the 4th is 5x to the 4th power. And 5 times negative 81 is negative 405. And this parentheses is a perfect square minus a perfect square. So we can factor this using the difference of squares. So simplifying this further, we will have x squared times x squared, we get x to the fourth. For the 81, we need to have plus 9 and we have minus 9. Now, x squared minus 9 is another difference of perfect squares. So we can factor this further. On the other hand, x squared plus 9 cannot be factored because it's not a difference of perfect squares. It's a plus sign. You cannot factor out x squared plus 9 as x plus 3 squared. You can only factor out x squared minus 9 as x plus 3 and x minus 3. And this will be our complete factors for this binomial.